my M field that I studied at the acoustic research unit at the University of Liverpool about the vibroacoustic modeling of the dull Joystenberg floor. And uh, this M field actually gave me the opportunity to study then, of course, the PhD uh, you mentioned. Uh, so the project that I will present today uh, was carried out uh, some years ago uh, and was a partnership between the University of Liverpool, the Technical University of Applied Science uh, of, uh, of Rosenheim in Germany, uh, a consultancy in uh, Switzerland, uh, Sound Firm, and the industrial partner was Nagili that provide the timber floor. Uh, concrete floors tend to have higher impact sound oscillation than standard timber floor systems and the frequency rates below 200 Hz. Uh, so this project was funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation to develop dull connected timber joist floors with improved impact sound insulation at low frequencies compared to typical floors. Uh, and the, pro the focus in this project was to develop and validate fine element models for a dull connected timber joist floor to determine circular dynamics and sound radiation below 200 Hz. Uh, in this picture, you can see how uh, what was the structure of this floor. So this uh, floor consisted of individual beam assemblies and each uh, beam assembly consisted of timber joists that they were connected together by using dowels. The dowels were following a, a zigzag pattern that, as you can see in the bottom picture. And uh, then the assemblies were connected together uh, to create the full floor by using metal screws uh, that were inserted in an angle of uh, 45 degrees. Uh, all the experimental work of this project was carried out at the Rosenheim University and the EMA was carried out experimental model analysis uh, to the individual assemblies and to the complete floor. The assemblies were excited uh, in the direction perpendicular to the surface using a, a shaker, as you can see in the picture, uh, and the excitation was from 4.3 Hz to 200 Hz, and the response uh, was uh, captured uh, using uh, accelerometers at a grid of 45 positions on each assembly. Also, the radiation physics was measured. The excitation of the, of the floor uh, for the radiation physics measurements was exactly the same as for the experimental model analysis. And sound intensity measurements uh, were carried out uh, using an, uh, an intensity probe following the uh, ISO approach. And uh, uh, they were used also a highly absorbent material near the ground plane. But actually, you can see the absorbed material in this picture. All the fine element modeling work was carried out uh, using abacus, and uh, the timber joists were modeled using cell elements, quadratic cell elements. And uh, uh, we we pay attention to uh, have a, to have a fine mess, so we can have uh, like uh, twelve elements uh, per bending wavelength. In order to approximate the action of the dowels between the beams. Uh, spring elements were used, three spring elements for each dowel uh, in, its, uh, in its direction, and the stiffness of the springs uh, was estimated after model updating against the results of experimental model analysis. Uh, one of the most uh, tricky part of this uh, fine element modeling was to uh, model the support conditions. So uh, in Rosenheim, in order to uh, approximate simple support conditions, they use use configuration that you can see more in detail in the drawing that consisted of a steel U-channel that, uh, that was uh, uh, placed on the top uh, of the edges of the assemblies. And then a steel rod was passing through uh, this uh, U-channel and elastomer layers that were on the top and the bottom uh, of the supports. Uh, this was found out that it was not a simple support exactly, so springs were used again. Uh, in order to uh, approximate the action of elastomers in the vertical direction, while in the other two directions the floor was pinned. And uh, more information about the FEM modeling of the floor, uh, you can find it in this uh, engineering structure paper that we published back in 2017. Then, uh, after creating the fine element model of individual assemblies, these assemblies were connected together to, comp to create the FEM model of the uh, Dow Joyce floor. The con there were two connection zones, as you can see at the bottom of the picture, uh, that had cell elements with finer mesh. And uh, in each connection zone, joint uh, constraints were used to approximate the action of the steel screws. This uh, constraint actually ties together uh, all the degrees of freedom uh, of the nodes that the, that the screws are passing through. In terms of vibroacoustics, 
uh, this floor had to be uh, coupled to an acoustic medium, to the acoustic medium that actually represent the laboratory of Rosenheim. But the way that the floor was modeled by user cell elements was creating some virtual gaps that made it impossible to couple these cell elements to the acoustic uh, solid elements. So for in order to overcome this problem, a thin plane, a thin plate was introduced between the floor and the acoustic medium. This plate, that we call it transfer plate, had a very small Young modulus and a very small density, so it doesn't affect the dynamics of the floor. And uh, but it could uh, transfer the motion from the floor to the medium. And uh, again, uh, more information about uh, this modeling uh, you can find in the paper published at the Inner Noise of 2016. So so far we have a vibroacoustic model for a floor that consists of the dull joist nipple floor, a 10 millimeter thin transfer plate that doesn't affect the uh, the dynamics but can transfer the motion from the floor to the acoustic medium, and an acoustic medium uh, that consists of uh, acoustic brick elements. The specific acoustic impedance was based on estimates of the wall absorption for wall and ceiling, and uh, for the lower for the ground level with a high absorption material, uh, we assume uh, an absorption coefficient of one. And sound intensity from the FM model was calculated by using the pressures of, uh, from the model at uh, distance uh, close to the close to the uh, to the floor at 0 0.2 0 0.4 meters. Frequency analysis was carried out to determine eigenfrequency and mode shapes. And subspace steady state dynamic analysis was used to calculate the dynamic response of the fluid structure coupled system due to harmonic excitation. This solver, the subspace, actually gave the opportunity to exclude some spurious modes that uh, exist in the model due to the springs, due to the local model uh, modes of the springs. Also, it gives the opportunity to apply damping to, to the whole uh, FM model as material damping, and in this case, as Rayleigh damping. And also, uh, give the opportunity to include impedance boundary conditions for the acoustic medium. The FEM models were validated uh, in terms of eigenfrequencies, in terms of mode shapes. Uh, for the validation in terms of mode shapes, the modal assurance criterion was used, that is, give, uh, is given by this formula, and uh, is resulting a uh, value between 0 and 1. 1 means very close uh, agreement and a very close correlation, and as values close to 0 uh, means that there is no correlation. And also we use the coordinate modal surface criterion that actually shows the consistency of its degree of, free, its degree of freedom uh, in the Mach value. And finally, the models were validated in terms of radiation efficiency. Uh, let's see now the results. This plot, uh, this figure actually plots the FEM IQ frequency against the experimental IQ frequencies for the three individual assemblies and the Dow Joyce Temple floor. We can see that close agreement is achieved in the frequency rates up to 200 Hertz. And uh, the only above 200 Hertz and uh, at the high frequency, we don't have uh, such a, a good agreement. Uh, in terms of uh, mode shapes, this uh, contour plot actually represents the MAC uh, value for the individual assemblies. Uh, the red color corresponds to very close agreement, and the blue uh, to uh, very low agreement. So we see that across the diagonal, uh, very high MAC values were achieved, over 0 0.8 for the most of the mode pairs. And uh, this plot shows the results of the co-MAC. Uh, in these squares in the plot are uh, the measuring positions. So actually this plot shows that we have very uh, very close agreement in the areas towards the center of its assembly, and the lower MAC uh, values were, uh, were obtained closer to the supports. For the Dow Joyce floor, uh, again, this contour plot shows the MAC, for 14 mode pairs, uh, we have very close agreement for the most, for, for the majority of the mode pairs with uh, MAC values over 0 0.7 for most of them. And uh, this co MAC plot is more informative because we can see that in the center areas of the assemblies, we have very close agreement. And the lower agreement is achieved closer to the connection zones of the assemblies where the screws are installed and close to the supports and especially where the uh, well, the steel rod is passing through the uh, through the uh, U-channel. And uh, finally, the uh, last validation was in terms of radiation efficiency that this figure uh, 
compares the uh, variation efficiency from the measurements and from the FEM model in, in one-third octave, band, uh, one octave bands. Uh, so from uh, we can see that both results they follow the same uh, trend their their curve uh, the curve and uh, above 40 uh, hertz uh, there is a close agreement between the radiation uh, efficiencies. So uh, the conclusion of this uh, study was that fine element models have been validated against measurement data for adult zoist timber floor, which is inhomogeneous and anisotropic. For the dynamic structural response, model updating was used to determine values for the adult spring stiffness. FA models were compared against experimental model analysis. For individual assemblies and the complete floor, it was, we found close agreement between EMA and FEM. Uh, MAC and COMAC values showed strong correlation between FEM and experimental data. And for some radiation for the plate into a room, a trusting plate was introduced into the FEM model to account for the complex non-continuous nature of the floor model uh, that will, would not otherwise have been suitable for fluid structure interaction with FEM. And the comparison of the measured and FEM predicted radiation efficiency showed a close agreement up to 200 hertz. Thank you. 